Previously, we introduced a category of molecules known as 1,2-dienes. So in our lecture on 1,2-dienes, we basically said that an alene is a general term that refers to a molecule that contains two double bonds that are connected to a single carbon atom. In this lecture, we're going to discuss the reactions that involve alenes, 1,2-dienes, as intermediate molecules. Specifically, we're going to focus on the isomerization of 2-butyne using a strong base into one butyne. So basically we take 2-butyne which basically is an alkyne that contains a triple bond between these two carbons in the middle. Now we add a strong base in the first step and then we add uh, water and we form the following product 1-butyne. So basically in this molecule we have the triple bond in the middle between the second and third carbon and if we add and follow these two steps we move the triple bond from the second third carbon to the third fourth carbon so we move the triple bond to the end of our molecule now the question is what exactly is the mechanism by which this reaction actually takes place and where is the 1,2-diene, where is the alene actually formed, actually found in our mechanism, <clears throat> in our mechanism of the reaction. So let's begin by examining the first step, so the addition of a strong base. Now this first step actually involves four individual steps that we're going to examine right about now. So let's begin with step one. So in step one, we basically take our 2-butyne and we mix it with some type of strong base. So let's suppose B with our lone pair of electrons is our strong base. It's an arbitrary strong base. What happens is this lone pair of electrons on our base takes away, deprotonates one of the H's found on the N carbon. Because we have symmetry, it doesn't matter which one of these H's is taken off. So let's suppose the H on this carbon is taken off. We produce the following weak acid. So strong base and its conjugate weak acid. And we also form the following molecule. So this lone pair of electrons ends up on this carbon. But what happens is there is resonance stabilization. What that means is basically this lone pair of electron can form a double bond between the third and fourth carbon kicking off one of our pi bonds and putting that lone pair of electrons on that second carbon. So we have resonance stabilization and the actual intermediate molecule, the carboanion, has a structure that is intermediate that is between these two resonance structures. Now, this is step one of this step here, the addition of a strong base. The second step of this addition of strong base is shown in this section. So basically, uh, once we are in this step, once we are in this section, this weak acid can react with either this structure or this structure. If it reacts with this structure, what happens is this lone pair of electrons takes away the H from the weak acid, reforming our reactant. But if this lone pair of electrons grabs this H, it will reform our strong base and also form our alene. So we have two double bonds that are bonded to a single carbon as was defined earlier. So in the second step, the second carbon is protonated to form our alene. Now, let's move on to the third and fourth steps of the addition of our strong base. In the third step, we take our 1,2-diene, the alene, as shown here, and it reacts with our strong base. And the way that it reacts is it takes our H that is found on the N carbon that contains the double bond 
forming the following structure and notice that now this lone pair of electrons can form a second pi bond the triple bond kicking off this pi bond and forming a lone pair of electrons on this second carbon. So in this step, we have resonance stabilization as we have in this step here. So in this step, in the third step, the allene reacts with a base to form a resonance stabilized intermediate that contains a triple bond. Now, in the fourth step of the addition of the strong base, we basically have this structure here reacting with the weak acid, taking away the H. So this lone pair of electrons takes away the H forming one butyne and notice one butyne is exactly what we wanted to form in the first step in this reaction but this is not the end story what happens is because one butyne is in the presence of our strong base and because this is a much stronger acid one butyne is a much stronger acid than anything else in our our mixture is stronger uh, than this it's stronger than any other intermediate involved it will basically react with the base and it will be deprotonated uh, by that base forming our acetylide and acetylide looks like this so basically when our when this step takes place one butyne then reacts with the base to form the acetylide now we move on to step two now we add our water molecule and the water molecule basically acts as an acid it acts to neutralize our solution so it acts as an acid our lone pair of electrons on this acetylide reacts and grabs the H away forming the following final product one butyne and this is the final step it's the second step so step one react or step one involves step one two three and four as shown as well as another step in which this one butyne is deprotonated to form our acetylide and in the second step we have step five that basically we have the addition of water to neutralize our solution and form our one butyne now the question is what exactly drives steps one through step four so what drives the formation of our acetylide from our two butyne in the in the addition of our strong base and the answer lies in the thermodynamic stability of our acetylide molecule so it turns out because this acetylide molecule this carboanion is thermodynamically very stable that stability drives the formation of acetylide this compound from one to or from two butyne and then we add water to form our one butyne so basically the reason that this reaction takes place in the first place is because our acetylide is thermodynamically more stable than any other intermediate in our reaction as shown.